it may look like I've completely lost it and gone mad because look, all of the Bath and Body Works fragrance mists, every single one that I could get my greedy little hands on in the store and when I couldn't find them in the store, online. So honestly, I got all of the ones that were available to me locally. I know there are probably like hundreds of them, but as of the current day, these are the ones that are readily available. I'm gonna tell you guys what each one smells like, whether it's good or bad, and uh, I'm gonna rank them. So the order in which I have them on the table, I'm gonna order them from worst to best, which is gonna be a challenge. There are so many of them. I feel this video will be long. Make sure you guys grab yourself some snackaroonies, a uh, drink or two, and just buckle in, because it's probably gonna be a long one. If you guys are interested in seeing this whole review on all of the Bath & Body Works body mists, then stay tuned. If you're new here, my name is Yana, this is The Scented. We do all kinds of fun fragrance things on this channel. Sometimes we talk about expensive perfume, and sometimes we talk about cheap body mists. If that's your vibe, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for any new videos coming up by hitting that notification bell, and let's get started. The first one is Pure Wonder. This is a newer one, it came out in 2021. This has notes of rose ice, jasmine, and amber. This one does smell really pretty. It almost smells like there's a fruitiness in here. Very girly, almost smells like something I would expect to smell from Victoria's Secret. And I have worn it a few times. It settles into almost like a marshmallowy, sweet, almost fruity scent on the skin. I don't pick up too much of that amber. It's not a warm, rich scent. It's more of a sweet, playful, fruity fragrance. I like it. I will give this one a seven out of 10. We'll place it there for now. I'll do a pan of everything at the end so you guys can see the rankings. But okay, seven out of 10, not bad. Nothing mind blowing, but not bad either. Now let's grab Into the Night. I do have this one in the perfume version. This one does have a vibe of Coco Mademoiselle or Miss Dior. It also reminds me a little bit of La Nuit Tresor. It has that fruitiness, the raspberry, that sweetness. It is a bit reminiscent of that. The notes in here are raspberry, amber, rose, patchouli and musk. The raspberry is very, very strong. It is quite fruity. I honestly have to say, I like this one less than Pure Wonder. Next up is Bahamas Passion Fruit and Banana Flower. I did wear this one recently. It gives tropical vibes. It's very vacation-y. I would take this one with me as like an easy grab and go on like a all-inclusive vacation. Nothing too fancy, casual, easy wearing. I like it, it's fruity. None of these are long lasting guys, by the way, if you're gonna ask about longevity, I'll note any that stand for longer than an hour, but most of them last until about the hour mark. Honestly, as a vacation scent, it is very, very pleasant and I do like this one more than Into the Night, but less than Pure Wonder. Pink Berry Clouds. This one has strawberry, sponge sugar, marshmallow fluff, and fresh air. You definitely get this sweet, almost, you know, marshmallow candies, like they'll sometimes include them in a mix of sour gummies and they're like encrusted in sugar. I recently had this, that's why it's fresh on my mind. It smells like those marshmallow candies that come in like a candy mix. I'm not a fan, it just really smells quite juvenile. So, so far this one for me is the worst one. Next is Denim and Daisies. This should be a fresh one. This is Sweet Daisies, Sun Soaked Denim, and Summer Citrus. This is very daisy fresh, at the same time quite common. It does remind me a little bit of the typical body sprays that you would get from the drugstore. Sometimes Bath & Body Works actually has some gems. It's all right, it's clean smelling, it's fresh. It's nothing to write home about, so we're gonna do that. Fall is fast approaching. I am a sucker for some pumpkin spice every so often. Marshmallow pumpkin latte, let's see. We've obviously got pumpkin latte, toasted marshmallows, sandalwood, and praline musk. It is a soft, fluffy pumpkin spice latte. Almost like the foam on top of the latte, not the latte itself. Not too intense. As someone who's not a huge gourmand lover and not someone who really enjoys sweet scents, this is working for me because it delivers a very gentle pumpkin spice and more of like a milky marshmallowy effect. I like the sandalwood in here as well. It's subtle, it balances it out. I actually really like this one. 
Dare I say, I like it better than Pure Wonder. Okay, next up we have Summer Melody. This one I'm not sure is still available because I did pick this up a little while ago. And this one has Honeydew and Vanilla. This is very Honeydew. Very Honeydew, very playful, airy. It does remind me of a Honeydew bubble tea, but with like some citrus and airiness. Even though they don't list citrus, I do smell citrus in here. Very fresh, very uplifting. I'm putting it in front of Into the Night, but behind the passion fruit and banana flower. Next up is the infamous In the Stars. This one does have a bit of a Baccarat Rouge vibe. I do have the perfume version of this one as well. It's pleasant, it's airy, it does have a light Baccarat Rouge vibe. It's kind of out of the shower fresh. And because it is reminiscent of a very popular niche scent that is quite expensive, and it does remind a little bit of Ariana Grande's Cloud, which obviously is also a smell like a Baccarat Rouge. I, I quite like it. I'm not gonna rate this based on how I personally feel about the scent, but based on the quality of the scent itself and how expensive smelling it is and how like of a true perfume scent it is, I'm gonna put this one at the top. Myself personally, I am a little bit tired of that Baccarat Rouge scent profile. I used to really, really love it and I do still really like smelling it. This is more of like out of the shower fresh version of that. It is beautiful, so I'm gonna put aside the fact that I myself am a little bit tired of it, objectively as much as possible. It is the best so far of the whole range. Let's go with Sweet Pea. This is a classic from Bath & Body Works. This has been around, I think, since their beginning. Sweet Pea, of course, has Sweet Pea, Pear, and Freesia. It's a classic from Bath & Body Works, but it does smell very Bath & Body Works. Nothing groundbreaking. A pretty light, airy scent would work lovely as an air freshener, honestly, and I'm not saying that to be mean. I would actually really like to smell this in a bathroom when I walk in. Like, I like the scent, but I, I don't think I want to wear this. I'm putting it behind Into the Night, but in front of Denim and Daisies. Let's grab Fresh Getaway. This has Yuzu Citrus and Ocean Air. This one I did wear a few times in the summer and I love this one. It has a laundry-esque quality to it, but a very uplifting citrusy note. This one is really, really pretty and it smells more like a fragrance than like a common body mist. It's quite unique. Very fresh and clean. I do really, really like this one. And I'm putting it as second place. Next is Champagne Toast. I did enjoy wearing this when I wore it somewhat recently. It has a nice nectarine note. A really juicy, fresh nectarine, tangerine. There's a little bit of that fizzle from the champagne. It is a really pretty, playful scent. Pleasant, but very sweet. And if you do like a nice nectarine note and you like your fuzzy fruits, then this one is really lovely, but it is quite girly. I don't see myself wearing this one very often. It's pretty, but let's see, where will I rank it? I prefer it over Summer Melody, but I like it less than Passion Fruit and Banana Flower. Let's go with Japanese Cherry Blossom. This one as well has been around since the beginning of time, I'm pretty sure. It has cherry blossom, pear, mimosa, jasmine, and sandalwood. I have to say, I did wear this one. This was the first one that I sprayed on myself. I strongly, strongly, strongly dislike the scent. It smells like a car freshener, like one of those common little trees. It doesn't smell like cherry blossom or any of the other notes listed. It's like borderline almost offensive. It's like a stuffy car with lots of those little trees in there. This is definitely dead last. <laughs> Next up is Fairy Tale. This one is a newer one. It has pomegranate nectar, orange blossom, and vanilla bean. This does, upon first sniff, give a little bit of YSL Libre vibes. The opening is really, really nice, but on the dry down, it does transform into kind of an obscure, sweet body mist type of scent. It is a really, really nice opening though. And that's the thing with most of these is the opening catches you. It has that unique scent and you're like, oh, this is interesting. But a lot of them do dry down to almost a like common amongst themselves type of scent. Mostly because of the opening at this moment, it's on fourth place. Next is Gingham. I do love the gingham candle. It smells very clean. And this one has notes of freesia, peach, clementine, violet, and musk. It is a very powdery, clean scent. It almost makes me think of like a, like a coastal shoreline, like maybe Cape Cod or something. Just a nice little getaway like that. 
I do really, really like this scent. It's so pleasant to me. And I think because I've always really liked the candle, you know, I like a peach, a gentle, soft, clean peach. I think that this is one of their better fragrances. I do really like the perfume version of this. It's my number one for now. Next up is Strawberry Pound Cake. This is strawberry all the way in the beginning. I remember smelling it. And in the beginning, you get a nice big strawberry a yummy kind of like strawberry shortcake, that type of strawberry, you know, it's like already cooked and kind of syrupy, but then the strawberry does go away and you're left with a pound of cake. And for that reason, I can't get down with it because I only want it for that strawberry, but the strawberry goes away probably within 15 minutes or so. And then you're left with that like heavy cake smell. So only for that reason, I'm ranking it lower than I normally would. It's behind Into the Night, but in front of Sweet Pea. Next, we have their newer fragrance called Poppy. So pear, rhubarb, poppies, and morning dew. This is very fresh and clean smelling. There's a little bit of a tingle, uh, like that poppy sort of tingle, but it is a little bit forgettable. I like it more than Strawberry Pound Cake, but less than Into the Night. Next is Hello Beautiful. We have Gardenia, Jasmine, Magnolia, Nectarine, and Musk. This is quite floral. Again, it reminds me of a scent verging on like a room freshener, like a bathroom freshener. Gentle sweetness, mostly florals, and because, let's face it, this is not an expensive scent, cheaper florals do tend to go in the air freshener direction and I find this one going in the air freshener direction. It's not offensive like the cherry blossom one. It's not outstanding either. It's pretty, but it's forgettable as well. It's second last, but I don't dislike it. All right, let's test out this blueberry sugar pancakes. We have fresh pancakes with sugared blueberries and caramel drizzle. Very gourmand. It smells exactly like something I would wanna eat. It does smell like, you know those artificial blueberries in some blueberry muffins? Kind of smells like that. I get like a pancake syrup type of scent. This is not a scent that I personally enjoy or would ever wear, but I'm trying to be as objective as possible here. Like the worst quality, most forgettable, most boring, obscure ones are going down at the end and the most interesting, more expensive smelling, attention grabbing ones are more at the top. Not only based on my taste, I'm trying to like, just be a little bit objective. So because of the fact that I think that somebody who likes gourmands would really enjoy this, I'm gonna rank it a little higher than I would for my personal use. It's gonna go behind Pure Wonder, but in front of Passion Fruit and Banana Flower. Next is At The Beach. This is Frangipani, Coconut, and Sea Salt Breeze. I really like this one, and I have to say this one did last on me. Surprisingly, one of the few that lasted beyond that hour mark. You get a really nice coconut, and it kind of makes you think of being at a swimming pool. That sea breeze is more like a poolside breeze, and it's very refreshing and pleasant. Frangipani is gentle. It gives you a little bit of a tropical floral, mostly kind of a salty, coconutty, breezy scent, a little bit suntan lotion-y, but refreshing and uplifting. I do really like this one, and I think somebody looking for a beach type scent, this would be a great one and incredibly affordable. So I am gonna rank this one pretty high. It is on third place for me right now. Now we have Gingham Love, a flanker of Gingham. This one has sugared red berries, blushing freesia, and rose meringue. This is again another obscure, sweet, almost smells like strawberries. It's okay, but I don't love it. And I did wear this one and I enjoyed it a lot less than the original Gingham. I like it more than Poppy, but less than Into the Night. Let's go for A Thousand Wishes. This has pink Prosecco, so a type of champagne, crystal peonies, and gilded amber. I remember I liked the perfume version of this so much a couple years ago. I got it as a gift for a friend of mine. I do really like this one. It's not too sweet. I like a nice peony note. It is really, really pretty. Clean, fluffy peonies. There's a bit of warmth in here. I'm gonna rank this. It's on number four for me. Next is Sun Washed Citrus, and this is Sugared Lemons, Mandarin, and Agave Nectar. This one actually took me by surprise because I am not typically impressed with a citrus scent, 
but this was such a happy scent. I wore this a few mornings and it just gave me that zing of life. It doesn't smell like a typical body mist. It does smell like a little bit of like sugared lemons, but in a beautiful fragrant way. Very uplifting, very happy, and I personally really, really love this, and I do think that it's a really well done scent, so I am gonna rank it at the very top. I, I actually do like it better than Gingham, and it is a scent that I would wanna wear myself, and it is quite long lasting. I think for body mist, I got around a two hour mark with this one, so it's a great one. I don't know if it's a seasonal one, but if it is, then when the season comes, grab that one. Then we have Moonlight Path. This has Jasmine, Blue Violet, Lavender, Lily of the Valley, and Soft Musk. And I'm gonna tell you guys right now, this one is mostly about a musky note, powderiness. It smells like old soap. Yes, like old soap. Like, let's say you're at a vintage antique shop and you go and use their bathroom. This is the soap that they would probably have. I don't love it and I would not want to wear it. It's not bad, but it's not something I would like to wear just because of how incredibly soapy, like a true boring soap. When I say, for example, Chanel number no. five smells soapy, it's very different. It's upscale and it's elegant. Um, this is soapy in kind of like a bathroom soap type of way, if you know what I mean. So for that reason, it's second last. Then we have Rose. I do really like this one. It has Rose, Jasmine, and Creamy Musk. This is absolutely my favorite of the bunch. It is a dewy, fresh rose. This, in fact, smells like A La Rose from Maison Francis Kirkjohn, which is a beautiful rose niche fragrance that costs hundreds of dollars. But this is actually such a close dupe, such a fresh, airy rose. And this too lasts quite a while. I get about a two hour mark. And considering the fact that MFK's A La Rose doesn't actually last that long, I would go for this. This is an excellent, objectively speaking, an excellent body mist fragrance. It's number one. We're down to the last two here. This is Champagne, Apple, and Honey. So it has Champagne, Apple, and Honey, and Autumn Woods. This smells like biting into a ripe, hard apple, like biting into a red, delicious apple. This is exactly what it smells like. It is very true to that apple scent. It's pleasant. It's not too sweet or honeyed. There's not a lot of woodsiness in here, though. I would say that it's mostly about the apple. So people that are looking for a true apple scent, an affordable true apple scent, this is it. I am ranking it behind Fairy Tale but in front of Pure Wonder. And the last one is You're the One. It has notes of white birch, velvet rose, and a drop of strawberry nectar. And you can really smell that strawberry. This one is really nice, rose and strawberry. However, it does dry down again to that obscure scent. And it's not very long lasting, but I do like that rose and strawberry combo. It is pretty, really pretty. It doesn't really smell like a common body mist, so. The top five are Rose, Sunwash Citrus, Gingham, In the Stars, and At the Beach. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, and I would love to hear what your favorite body mist from Bath & Body Works is. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!